In today's video, we're going to be taking a look here at the tropics where we've seen some recent increases in our chances of development. We're also going to be taking a look, as always, at the upcoming pattern where there is plenty of storminess, a big time heat wave on the way, and some other opportunities at cooldowns for the east. So it is a roller coaster overall. Before we get into things, be sure to check out our other business, Prestige Weather, in the description and pinned comment down below, where you can get weekly consulting calls, early access to our seasonal and monthly forecasts, among other consulting services within there. It's only $5 a month, and again, you can find it in the description and pinned comment down below. Let's get straight into things here, though, with our tropical developments here. And as you can see, we do have our Gulf of Mexico system. Still, over the next 48 hours, only a 0% chance. But we can see over the next seven days, a 30% chance of development, certainly an increase there. I believe this was a 20% chance yesterday. So we've seen a big kind of just a uh, chunk of, of percentage added to this. It's not that huge, but definitely moving in a worsening direction. We can see these two orange systems out here. Our bottom one here now has a 40% chance of development over the next 48 hours, and then a 60% chance of development over the next seven days. So we've seen a big time increase in that percentage there. Really, really interesting to see uh, that these are just climbing in percentage so uh, rapidly and also equally because we can see this one over top now also has over the next 48 hours a 40% chance of development and over the next seven days it also has a 60% chance of development so it's just like its counterpart there very interesting heading relatively in the same direction one's just on top of the other and it's going to be interesting to see what comes of these two systems as these these are some of the bigger chances we've had come out of the MDR short for main development region this season now there is a tropical system here in the kind of the West Coast that looks to impact Southern California. We're going to talk about that through this portion of the video, the, the current storminess and upcoming storminess. We can see that for tonight overall, we do see a larger storm system here over Southern Canada, 998 there. And this is bringing some thunderstorms to Indiana, Ohio, Michigan here certainly bringing some very intense thunderstorm activity there. Uh, we can see that over the Southwest, we do have some sporadic kind of uh, thunderstorms taking place isolated and scattered uh, throughout these areas in California, Nevada, Oregon, Utah, Colorado, New Mexico, and Arizona there. Uh, so that's kind of some more monsoon type activity. We do see that there is some scattered about and isolated thunderstorms up and down the east coast all the way from Florida to Maine there. Uh, and then offshore of those states as well, we continue to see some thunderstorms ramping up. So definitely a stormier day here for Thursday the 17th. As we reach into tomorrow afternoon, what we end up seeing is a thousand millibar here over eastern Canada. We see some scattered and isolated thunderstorm activity here for the west, still ongoing. That's a little bit of snow there for the kind of Canadian Rockies. So some of the first snowfall for North America happening there in southern North America at least. Um, definitely very, very interesting. Let's just take this towards Saturday the 19th here, and this is our tropical system that we were talking about. This is going to be heading relatively close here to Southern California, and by relatively close, I mean literally hitting it. So we're going to have to be talking about this throughout the video. We can see that there already is some thunderstorms in place here for a lot of the West, so we continue to see that. Also, the Northeast dealing with these areas of activity. Um, the southeast, we see some isolated and scattered about activity ongoing as well. It's really this tropical concern here. By Sunday, it's drawing very, very near to Southern California. We can see it's already bringing impacts here to a lot of areas in California, Arizona, New Mex or Nevada, better yet, and Idaho. So definitely some heavier storms as a result of this are going to be taking place. We really, really need to watch that closely. By Monday, the 21st, we can see that this has basically moved through and up. It continues to bring rainfall, but obviously has dramatically decreased in intensity here as it's 1,001. But this is definitely going to pose a flooding risk here for a lot of the West, so we need to watch it on the total precipitation as well. Definitely, especially on top of that monsoon activity that we've been seeing anyway, so definitely multiple impacts to be watching for. The Gulf of Mexico here, we do see some scattered about activity as well. Um, really, really looking to be an active pattern for them. And again, we're going to be watching for some tropical development potentially in here as well. So many things to be watching for. 
here on the 22nd, which will be Tuesday, we do see that that low has dissipated over the West. We do continue to see some storminess as a result of it, but also as a result of a lot of that uh, thunderstorm activity that was already in place. So there is multiple reasons for this. We do see this kind of tropical wave beginning to impact Texas and Louisiana. So certainly, like I said earlier, something we're going to be watching through the upcoming pattern. Wednesday the 23rd here, what we see is that this has moved further and further into Texas. We could see that things are quieting down out west. We do see some of the northern Rockies and the northern plains seeing some storms as well. Uh, but overall, things are looking a bit quieter as there is some high pressure parked here over a lot of the central and eastern regions. And this is what is sending a lot of these storms around this area. So we're seeing it kind of just avoiding that middle portion where that high pressure is again parked in place. For Thursday here on the 24th, what we see is some thunderstorm activity for a lot of the mid-Atlantic. And then also for a lot of regions um, through Texas, New Mexico, Colorado, Wyoming, Montana, North Dakota, South Dakota, and Minnesota there. So very, very interesting stuff. For Friday here on August 25th, what we end up seeing is a lot of thunderstorms as a result of a low overhead. So 1,004 here, 1,006 here. Overall, some lower pressure beginning to make itself um, into the eastern states and the overall pattern for these areas. Saturday the 26th, what we see is a whole lot of the same. So it's moved a little bit further south, but all the way from Colorado and New Mexico and take that eastward, we are seeing thunderstorms all the way up into the northeast. Again, we do have this 1,003 here, 1,005 there, both bringing impacts for these areas. And then Sunday the 27th, we've reached another trough in the east pattern, so that heat wave will be pretty much said and done according to this model. Something like this is what you're taking a look at. Potentially the redevelopment of a positive PNA, so we'll need to take a look at that total, uh, or better yet, the temperature pattern in a minute. We do begin to see some tropical activity picking back up in the Gulf here. That is a 992 millibar low pressure center, so probably a tropical storm that this model's calling for, but keep in mind this is 240 hours out, so definitely long range outlook here to say the least. Now as we take a look at this total precipitation, we can see that there is kind of a drier area in here. We do at certain points see some, um, some storms moving through this area, um, but definitely, it, it's drier for the most part for most of the upcoming pattern. Uh, we do see a lot of precipitation moving up through the west, so uh, because of that tropical system. We do see that the east, especially the northeast here, is seeing quite a bit of activity as well. Um, and then for Texas and a lot of the Gulf, we are seeing a lot of, of storms in general here. So definitely an interesting pattern. Uh, to say the least and it looks kind of nice here we see a lot of swirling going on uh, with this I know that these are obviously impactful systems but uh, it just looks very appealing for some reason and very unique here on the total precipitation as always your white is going to be pretty much no precipitation your grays will be anywhere from a tenth of an inch or less greens are a tenth of an inch to half an inch blues half an inch to an inch your yellows are an inch to two inches reds are two to five inches there and then your browns are five to ten inches of precipitation we see actually a lot of that for southern california as a result of that tropical system now let's go ahead and take a look at the temperature pattern here as you can see some cooler temperatures on the way uh, but those do come to an end pretty quickly as we do see a warm pattern set in and out west very very cool an intense negative pna helped out by that tropical system that certainly cools things off as well um, but for the warmth, we see this surging to the east as a result of all of this. So definitely a very, very interesting flip here in the pattern. As we keep going, we see things stay warmer in the east until about the 26th at least. And this is when we begin to get some cooler temperatures moving back in, especially the further north you are. Ohio Valley, Great Lakes, northeast here, all dealing with some cooler temperatures. Uh, the west still is as well, so that's indicative of a negative PNA. Uh, we need to watch this very, very closely. There is still some warmth here lingering for the southeast and the deep south, though, so that is going to be a factor as well. As we keep going, uh, what we see is that we see a warming trend for a lot of the west and central United States, but still nothing crazy as far as cold in the east. It's pretty exclusive here for the mid-Atlantic and the northeast. We do need to keep in mind that this is an ensemble model. And with that being said, there is plenty of models, and this is taking the mean average of all of those. 
So we do need to wait some time and see if this does look a little bit more like some cold in the east. Maybe it'll be a little bit more of a heat wave pattern. I think there's some huge question marks here in the long range, in my opinion. So that is what we're going to be watching very, very closely for. Anyway, with all that being said, be sure to subscribe. We do upload videos just like this one every single day. You can even hit the bell icon for daily notifications when we upload so you never miss one. Be sure to like the video if you did enjoy it. Leave a comment down below and I'll see you guys in the next video.